What's behind this recent spike in violence? You know, that's very hard to say. I've heard a number of Israeli and Palestinian analysts, and no one can put a finger on it and give you a reason for this, um, what those three attacks in the space of a week, 11 Israelis dead. I think it's the deadliest spate of violence we've seen for years. Um, after that, following that yesterday, a Palestinian who was on an Israeli bus near Jewish settlements in the West Bank pulled out a screwdriver and attacked a passenger, another passenger who was armed, shot him dead. His victim is now in hospital. Uh, Israel has responded with arrests in the West Bank. And during those arrests, which Israel says was of suspects related to the gunman in the, in the last, the final attack of the three, that's when we've seen the Palestinian deaths, two in Janine in the north of the West Bank yesterday, one in Hebron today. So what are we looking at? Uh, it is not yet reminiscent of the second intifada, I'd say. Doesn't mean it won't turn into that, but then the Palestinian militant groups were in control. They were funding, they were training, they were providing material for suicide attackers. This time they're welcoming it. We've heard um, praise from Hamas and Islamic Jihad, but they're not in control. We're seeing lone wolves, we're seeing small cells. Uh, it's more reminiscent, I think, of the knife, what became known as the, the knife attacks, the knife intifada of 2016. But then they were armed with knives or perhaps vehicles, cars. This time they're armed with, uh, with guns, with automatic weapons. It's more dangerous. Well, Israeli uh, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has uh, announced a, a raft of security measures uh, to deal with the uptick in, in violence. Yes, he has. Um, we've seen the arrests uh, as we've discussed. We've seen a pooling of intelligence. I think that's important uh, because... Some of the attackers were actually uh, Israeli Arabs. That's Arab citizens of Israel who had links to ISIS. So we've seen um, arrests inside the, um, Israel itself of people uh, who were either in Israeli prisons before or who had tried previously to go to Syria to fight with ISIS. We've seen a boosting of the number of troops inside the West Bank. There are plans also to block holes in the security fence, which is how uh, some Palestinians come into Israel illegally to work here, and that applies to the gunmen in the final of the three attacks. So all of those things are happening together. I will say this, there is one bright note in all of this, and that is that today, which is the Friday before Ramadan, the Holy Muslim month begins, the prayers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem passed quietly. That's a good sign. You know, it could change at any moment, but I am, I suppose, clinging to that in the hope that this Ramadan won't be as violent as the last. And we have seen that Israel has said that the restrictions that it was planning, the easing of restrictions that it was planning for this Ramadan will still go ahead. They have not been cancelled yet. So that's the only bright spot I can find at the moment when I'm looking at the past week. Iris Markler, 